Yay Networks. You told What's me. What's up, y'all? This me, is your boy Cornelius. Like two episodes, you told me Sexy Red was like a scent or something. And now you're saying she's a rapper? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. She, she's a, um, she is a, um, she's a musical artist. Okay. Um, who. So you lied. Lied about what? You lied about whatever you're singing. Uh, about, about, about. Anyways, I don't know what you're singing. I, see, I don't know when you're talking normal and when it's like a rap lyric because you send me a text and it would be so random and I'd be like, what is this? And he'd be like, oh, nothing, babe. And then I hear him singing it because you know I don't know what you're talking about. Because if it's not, you know, there was Jesus. Oh my gosh, that song goes so hard. Oh my God, we got in a car the other day and we we're like driving the whole family in and, and I was, Heather, when Heather's phone is connected to the car, I just know we're going to be listening to like, Cry these, out worship. These, it's beautiful worship. The, all the songs sound the same. They no, all they, have the they no, all have they the don't. same they all have the same tempo. That's they go through the true. same thing. They're like, Oh daddy God and then it's like <laughs> and it goes down. Yeah. It's like and then they go through no, the hook and then they sing Jesus. the hook. Dare with Jesus, and, Daddy God the is all the same. And, Nobody wants so thankfully everybody else in the car wanted wow. me to plug up my phone. Wow. So that we could listen to you know, just have something like to jam out to. The kids like do really like Christian rap. rap. That's Roman. Who? Roman said that's his favorite song, the new Christian rap song. Um, okay. I forgot what it's called. I don't know. I'm not a rap person. So, anyways, we're talking about I one know house. What the kids like, baby, because you influence them. Who influences them? You do. Absolutely. How else not. would they know about rap music unless you influence them? Well, look, I have to. I, I would like to expose them to my culture. Anyways. I expose them to mine. So we're one house here. <laughs> <laughs> hey, and I don't, I, I love that transition because yeah. we are one house. We're one house. And I, and in a we're culture, different. in a culture of control, <laughs> if this was a culture of control, yeah. then there would always be division. And it'd There's, always be the winner. Yeah. And there's not. Because it's like, it's like, you know, it would be like, well, I don't want you to, it'd be my wife saying like, I don't want them listening to this type of music or me saying, yeah. I don't want them listening to this type of music when that's not the case. Like my wife is a grown woman. She is their mother. She has a responsibility to be able to provide that, 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 that guidance and whatever it is to, to the kids. I feel so like, like you really like that though. You do what? How I guide them. Absolutely. I feel, I feel like it's healthy. I mean, yeah. that's why I feel like God gives two, two people <laughs> yeah. because if it was yeah. just me, <laughs> I mean, Ratchet City. But since it's you, since it's like, you know, you you help to, um, what do you bring to the house? Um, <laughs> um, Jesus. <laughs> bring Jesus. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, bring it back in. Well, how we started, how we started dating. Okay, so how we started dating, it was a lot of rules and regulations. Well, There's a lot of them. There was a lot. Um, the Lord did tell us not to kiss until we got married. And I don't think that was like the, I don't know. Do you feel like that was the start of the rule? Uh, yeah. I, honestly, I mean, you know, I, I, I felt like I know what I heard. Same. I wanted a guy that wouldn't kiss me until I got married. So I don't think there was anything wrong with that. But I think it's our mindset towards everything else along the way. Like we were so rules driven so and based. Driven, yeah. Like God told us that, but he, uh, we could also be, like be free to be ourselves and I felt like I couldn't freely be myself with you when we were dating because it was just like I was super affectionate and touchy and flirtatious. And, you know, I was all those different things. And I felt like I was like, OK, you can't do anything. You know what I mean? Because I, w I would definitely go back and change that. Yeah. Like if we can go back. I would definitely go back and change like be that. silly, like dance together, have yeah. fun, laugh. Like I was we weren't doing that. It was no laughing. It was serious. It wasn't fun. It was like serious. It was like our future. It was like Jolly ministry. Enemy. Like we need to prepare. We what is your to... purpose? What is your vision? Yeah. Everything was like hard. Like we got to do this. We got to do this. And he's like, well, you need to wear, you know, we go to counseling sessions and he was like, I wanted to wear more clothes. And I was like, I want to wear less. <laughs> I don't remember that. Being you don't remember that? No, it remember was. That. I'm not, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm with, just saying I don't remember it. With the Terry's, they were just like, okay, Ugh, babies. Oh, my gosh, baby. Go what if their family's watching? I don't give two Okay, claps. Okay. All right. Praise the Lord, baby. So, <laughs> so I remember coming to church the next week with a pantsuit on, and she's like, oh, I bet you he loved that. 
That's why I remember that conversation. I don't remember. Okay. I don't remember. Well, anyways, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I'm just saying I don't remember. Anyways, we were very like rules. Like, okay, you got to be like this. You got to be like this. And he's like, well, you know, if you're going to be my wife, then the, you have to cook this amount, right? Because you're like, when I come home, I want this, this, and this when we get married. I was like, well, if you can be my husband, you got to be like this, this, and this. Yeah. So we both had, and that's why we broke up. We broke up the first time we broke up because we had a lot of pressure on us. At the time, we were both, you know, serving in our ministries, and a lot of people knew both of us. And I was the pastor's assistant. It was a really mm -hmm. large church, so so they always saw me with him, and so it was always. So he's like thing. the eligible bachelor, right? And then at my church, I was in like five different ministries, right? And so I'm serving, and so all of a sudden we come together, and now people are looking at us, and they're just like, you know, looking at us as an example, I think, too, but then also pressuring us about marriage and we had not developed to all these different things we even know who each other was and I felt like instead of getting to really know each other we were so focused on the rules of the relationship I agree you know what I mean like you need to be like this if we're going to get married and I'm like well you need to be like this if we're going to get married even our, our marriage premarital counseling was all right Heather if you're going to move down here, y'all going to get married. You have to make this amount of money mm -hmm. or you cannot move down here. Like our wedding got postponed because I couldn't find a job in Atlanta. Turns out I ended up taking my New York job with me and I was able to work from home. But everything was so religious, rules driven. Everything was. Right. And it, we didn't stop for a moment and be like, hey, who are you? Right. Like I didn't know my husband listened to rap music until like what, year eight? I think it was like year eight. Yeah. It was like year eight. Where you were free about it. Mm -hmm. And I was just like, wait, what? You don't listen to worship music with me all the time? Heck no. Can't stand it. Well, couldn't stand it. I mean, I still listen. I mean, to you it. still listen to it now, but. It. I just, it wasn't, it wasn't like something that I, I, I enjoyed. I didn't, yeah. I didn't grow up listening to it. You yeah. know, I grew up listening to, you know, black hymns. I grew up yeah. Baptist and then Pentecostal. And, but even still, like within my culture, I grew up listening yeah. to certain music. So then I kind of get into this whole CCM market and I'm like, oh, this is this person. And and like I said, it all just started just sounding the same. And it's still to me, it, it all it sounds, sounds so different. exactly the same. They just change up the words, the same beat, same hook, same it's just same. It's all the same. It's but anyway. Beautiful worship. It's great. And and I'm and, and you know what? I'm glad you like it. Like I really am. And I feel like yeah, uh, you had I, I I always felt like dang if I let her know who I really am, she's not going to like me mm. and I'm not going to measure up to her. Mm. Like she has a, she has a standard that's up here. And then the same way you felt the same way towards me. Like, but I, he has this standard all the way up here and we're not like, we, we can't, we can't show any sense of humanity. We couldn't, it's like, we couldn't be ourselves. We couldn't real be ourselves. with each other because it's like, no, that's not allowed. It's about the ministry. It's about the vision. It's about the purpose. It's you about- You couldn't joke around. What you couldn't building, play around. Yeah. You couldn't just be honest. Like, yeah. you know, it's like, you know, you, you don't, you, you don't want to joke about this because, you know, that's, that's using coarse language and you don't want to do this and you know, and it's just like, yo, like all those rules. Yeah. And here's, here's the thing. We ain't saying that rules are bad. Because if we were saying that, then I believe we're going against the words of Jesus. And Jesus yeah. came and Jesus says, I did not come to do away with the law, he said, but I came to complete it. Reason being is because he said, the reason why he said that is because the law he recognized was not sufficient enough to grant you salvation. So if Jesus is saying that the law is not enough and that he has to come in for completion, then ultimately that should let us know that the law is neither good nor bad is how it's applied. Yeah. And what we're saying is once you create a culture of care, this opposite, this culture of control, con mm -hmm. op or culture of control is driven by law, is driven by morality, is driven by all these different yeah. rules you have to live up to in order to be accepted. Once you finally get out of that in your relationship and you start to actually care for each other, like, no, I like I respect you and respect mm -hmm. is that I see you for who you are, even if you don't change. Mm -hmm. And I learn to like the person that I respect. Mm -hmm. Control is. I will only like you if you meet my demands and if you meet my my value system. And we that's what we had. We had this thing like, here's my yeah. value system. This is what I believe. This is what we're going to do. You don't do it. Boom. That's a lot of marriages right now. A lot of and marriages. And that's why and there's unhappy. this power struggle because it's just like, I need you to perform. 
I remember we went to a marriage retreat once, and one of the ladies there said that she made a performance report for her husband. I remember that. A PowerPoint performance I remember that. report showing him his progress and how it's not been good. And so I feel like although you might not create a PowerPoint presentation, ladies, you might have one in your head. Maybe you are taking score of how many times you've had to make dinner, how many times you have to clean up, how many times you have to do, how many times your husband is not doing this, this, and this. If only my husband would do this, then we'd be in a better position financially. Only if my husband helped more around the kids, I'd want to have sex more. Only if, and it's like we have this score sheet in our mind Mm -hmm. and we're just not, we don't step back and just say, hey, my spouse is human and they're in this with me and they're having their own struggles, their own things they're working through. Like, let me just sit down and like ask you how you're doing. Yeah, and like, just be fine with that. We, we, yeah. we can talk more about this as soon uh, as soon as this break. So this episode today is sponsored by BetterHelp. Have you ever just felt stressed out and like overwhelmed all day, and it just feels <laughs> like your schedule's all over the place? Yeah, like sometimes I go through seasons where I'm in a rut, and I'm like, I don't know what this is, but I need to work through what I'm going through because I don't want to take it out on the people I love around me. Like yeah. I want to work through whatever. I'm dealing with in my life. And this is why I love therapy. I go to therapy on a regular basis. It's a, it's, I call it a facial for my soul. Right. And it helps me work through whatever I'm going through and it helps me get it out. And it's nice to have this unbiased person on the other side that can walk me through whatever I'm going through. Absolutely. And this is why we love better help. They are incredible. They have online therapy. You can connect with somebody within 48 hours. They can walk you through what you're going through. And if it doesn't work out with that one person, you know, it took me a couple people to find my therapist, right. you know, and it does that. They'll match you with somebody else. Yeah. So don't give up. So if you've hit a wall with finding support and help, keep going until you get the help you need. Yeah. So if you're thinking about therapy right now, yeah. I'm telling you, give better help a try. They're amazing. It's something about being able to find that sweet spot, that yeah. sweet spot of life, that peace, that culture of care we've been Come talking on. about. Something about doing that. And the cool thing is you're going to fill out a brief questionnaire. Yeah. They're going to get you hooked up with somebody. Like my wife mentioned, if you don't like it, you can switch them to the left, to the left, everything you want to the box <laughs> to the left. Like they can, you can move out. They got financial aid available. Yeah. Yo, better help is exactly where it's at. Find your social sweet spot with better help. You can visit betterhelp.com slash Lindsay's to get 10% off mm-hmm. your first month. Save them cool. Better help. H E L P.com slash Lindsay's 10% off your first month. Save them coins. Do what you got coins. to do. Betterhelp.com <laughs> slash Lindsay's, L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-S. All right, back from our sponsors, and we are back in this piece. I'm so proud of you, baby. But you I said that. peace. You said I know. Peace, I, it's, but you thought the other one, but it's okay. I did. I thought the other it's word. It's okay, but, but I you didn't, didn't say use it, it. Because this is a family podcast. I'm proud of you. This is growth. This is a family. Now, but your children of, can listen to this. Part of being one house is okay. I don't cuss. I don't curse. Not my jam. I don't. I don't. That's just not me. You curse. Okay. I have cursed under my breath, hundred percent. I've heard Jesus. it out loud. Oh yeah, I've said it to you before in our marriage in the past. Heck yeah, I have because you pissed me off. <laughs> uh, I, I heard. I heard it like a week ago. No, you didn't. Baby, you didn't hear me cuss a week ago. Yes, I did. <laughs> no, you didn't. Yes, I did. You must have been in your dreams on them edibles or something. <laughs> uh, I, went, I went in my dreams. Baby, oh, when? Huh? When did I say a, a cuss word? A week ago. What did I say? What did I say? When we were uh, getting, to, getting to know each other a little bit better. Oh, stop. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You're so annoying. No, I didn't. <laughs> You're yes, like you did. making me red. Face stop. Down. <laughs> what? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> stop. What's Anyways, up? I don't cuss. No, don't get me wrong. Let me be transparent and honest. Sis. There's times that Sis. I get upset. <laughs> we are not talking about our sex life on this podcast, right? Why? Now. This is this is life. Okay. Okay. So there's times where I get frustrated. I might get frustrated in life and I won't cuss out loud, but I will tell the Lord how I'm feeling in a very raw, honest way. Cause I feel like he's the only one I'm allowed to say a curse word to. You can say it to me. I, I I can't though. Like I can't, Mm, I can't, I don't know. I can't, I feel like I can say it to him and he, he says language to me. He like Heather language. And I'm like, okay. But he never says language. To he me. says language to me. But it's like telling him is like a safe place for me to tell him. 
Now, I know I could tell you because you're a safe place too, but I feel like I am, I, I don't want the world to hear it. Only God can hear it because I feel like he can, he can help me with that area. Because you'd be like, good job, baby. I'm proud of I'm you. Like, yeah, I'm glad you said it. You're right. Tell them all to go there. No, no. So what I'm saying though is like, Dang, you make, you're making me miss what I was talking about because of what you said earlier. You're so annoying. But you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't use foul language. Okay. And that's the thing about being one house is that you don't. And I then don't. You were getting ready to say that my husband does, and so, and I think there's this stigma because we can go through the scriptures. Don't use foul and abusive language. Don't curse. Don't do all this stuff. This is, of course, jesting. Cursing is different than than using than using the English language, and that's the con- that's a deeper conversation. I don't think religious people yeah. are ready to have because if I can curse you, I can say that you know I hope that you fall off a bridge tomorrow. That is a curse. But yeah. then me cursing and me saying that I mean, if I'm just saying that about you know I drop something on my toe, then yeah. that's just a word that I use. But that's a deeper conversation that religious yeah. folks ain't ready to have, and that ain't what the podcast about. But judge your mama, not me. Keep going. But I can't change my husband. She cannot. And guess what? He can't change me. He can't he make me cuss. And I can't make him stop cussing. Right. And so, baby, <laughs> why are you being bad over there? Why are you trying to mess with the religious people? Oh, this is payback. Okay. So, anyways, I can't change him and he can't change me. We can't change each other, y'all. And I feel like there's this idea. Look at me, baby. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at me. I got I'm you. Here. I got you. So... I feel like there's this idea in marriage where we can try to change each other and you'll never be one house. That's I think in juicy a, lips. Go ahead. Thank you, baby. And Amos three and three, I think it is. It says, How can two walk together unless they agree? You said Amos. Is it Amos yeah. or Amos? Amos, whatever. Amos, Amos. Whatever. That's how I said it. Okay. <laughs> okay. So one house. One house. One house. So nonetheless, I feel like there's this struggle where it's like, oh, I want you to be more like this. Or I want, like, for example, maybe you want your guy or your girl to go to the gym more. And you think that, you know, telling them every single day is going to make them want to go to the gym. No. If my husband came to me every day and told me to go to the gym, I would be like, "Mm." I mean, you're right. I can do something. But I have to get a revelation of it myself. I have to want to. I remember coming back from Cabo. I went on a girl's trip and I felt like I needed a reset. I felt like I was eating everything in sight. I wanted to start eating healthier. I'm vegan, but I mean, you can still eat bad as a vegan, right? So I'm eating all this crap and I just felt disgusting. So my husband walked in and he's like, yeah, I'm doing 75 hard. I start tomorrow. I was like, oh, perfect. I'm doing it with you. He didn't ask me to do 75 hard with him. I already did it twice prior and she knew I was doing it. Yeah. You want to do it? Fine. So I actually went through 75 hard, completed it. And then I went through 75 soft and completed it. So I worked out, ended up being a hundred and about 80 days consistently where I worked out every day. And then I stopped because for like a week, because I wasn't feeling good. I got sick, but then I started back up again. So of this past, you know, three, four months, I've only taken a week off. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, now I I love working out. I need to move every day. I don't care. Somehow, some way I need to, I might not go to the gym every day, but I need to move, whether it be walking, Peloton, I need to take a class, Pilates. I need to be moving. I need to do something. But I did not change because I saw you go to the gym a hundred times a day. Right. I had to want, I had to get upset a, a, enough at my own body and my own self to actually want to change. Right. And I feel like people want people to change so bad and they think they're going to change just by saying you need to change. Yeah. And, you know? and that's what happens in a culture of control. Culture control says, yeah. culture control says, this is my, this is my value system. This is, mm-hmm. this is my sense of morality. I'm putting these on you. I'm, I, and I'm saying mm-hmm. these are things you need to do in order mm-hmm. for me to like you, in order for me to accept you. Mm-hmm. And we think that that's going to make people change and it doesn't, which okay. is why I hate to tell you this, but religion inside a church doesn't work. I mean, I have been around some of the most religious people and they are some of the most ratchet people outside of church because it doesn't work because in a culture of control, all you do is hide. Yeah. You don't want, you don't, you don't, you don't, there's no compassion there. So in yeah. a culture of care, it's like, yo, I love to work out. If you don't like to, Hey, do you, Yeah. I love you. I'm going to walk with you through it because I love you as you are, yeah. not as I, you know, as I, as I want you to be. So it sucks. Like, and people who are listening, if you're in a relationship like that, you know how much that sucks to be around somebody who is constantly trying to tell you 
what you do wrong. And I think that was something that That's was horrible. That was something yeah. that you and I, we, we, you would always say it to me. You're like, dang, do I ever do anything right? Like yeah. you're only telling me everything that I do wrong. Like, yeah. could you actually encourage, encourage me? me? Could you, could you yeah. tell me, tell that, me what I'm, I'm like, doing right? I'm like, well, everything you're doing right, just keep doing it. And you're like, yeah, but what? Because but, all I yeah. hear are the one or two things that I'm not that I doing. Need that I need to correct. That I need to change. And that made me feel so discouraged. And it's insecure. Like, and insecure like why even bother you know what i mean and then if you're married outside of that then you have maybe your coworker, or other people on social media telling you that you're great that you're beautiful that you're this and then you start feeling like oh other people are feeding me and my marriage is not feeding me anymore and i feel like that's how people begin to drift they drift and they start infidelity they start talking to other people they start reaching out because they're like oh i'm getting fed here because i'm not getting fed at home mm -hmm. and if you remember that you're one house and everything you need is under that one house, then everything you need will be there. Yeah. I truly believe that. Like, I feel like we have a brand new marriage. We give each other space to be who each other is. I don't want to change. I never want to change you. I want you to be exactly well, you who you are. Well, you did want to change me. No, I did. No, I did. But I'm saying current now. I, I don't I want you I, to I change. Don't, I don't. Like, yeah, when I say, like, I'll be looking at you like, dang, my husband is fine. Like, you get better every year, baby. Seriously, like I look at our beginning pictures and like, you, you know, like, you know, like uh, Jenny Jones and Ricky Lake, like how they used to look in high school I and then know. they would bust through the doors. And they look like ripped, like baby, you're giving. All okay. girls fumbled me in high school. They Dang, fumbled you, baby. Fumbled me, y'all. Fumbled me, yo. But you know fumbled. what? I'm just playing. But only one is grace to be your wife and that was me. So I'm happy about that. But what I'm saying I is know, I like. I definitely married up. <laughs> so did I, baby. But I feel like we have this one house mindset about everything, everything. Like somebody tries to talk to me, I'll like laugh and joke and tell my husband. He'd be like, I bet they do want to holler at you because you fine. Oh, yeah, yeah. My wife, she hit me. She hit me. She was like, yo, this person was in my DM saying like, they think I'm beautiful or something. He wants to meet me. He wants and, to meet you. Yeah. And I, I responded back. I was like, I mean, if I was him, I'd do it too. Like, of course, you're beautiful. Yeah. Like, you're gorgeous. Like, I'm, yeah. everybody thinks you're a model. Of course, I would do yeah. the same thing. I ain't got no hatred towards towards the guy for trying to have game. Yeah. Like, do you? But also in a culture of care, there's no fear. Yeah. So I'm not afraid. I'm not looking like, you're oh, my goodness. afraid somebody else is going to scoop me up. I mean, if they do, they're going to give you right back. <laughs> Legit, you don't think so? They're gonna be like, ah, oh, no, pimp. Yeah. But you know what I come mean? Come get your wife, come, bro. Come get her. Like, <laughs> yeah, come, come get her. Hey, bro. Yeah. I thought it was what, babe, bro. You could but, have her, yeah. I but agree. you know what I mean? Like, yeah, but yeah. but in a culture of care, there is no fear. In yeah. a culture of control, con it, the the control is all based in fear. Yeah, is based in a sense of hatred. Is based in this idea that. You know something bad is going to happen, and I'm I'm afraid. So I need to control this. I need to control that. I need to do everything. I need the to have finances. all the rules, have all the laws. All I need that. to. Oh my goodness! Oh, is there, is, and and what happens with this is, if you have a culture of control, that means. Well, you know what? I'm gonna explain that. I'm gonna take a break right after this. Let's talk about chime. Come on. Let's talk about chime now. Money. You guys, I wish chime was around when I was in college. Facts. I remember being in college. And I remember maxing out all my credit cards <laughs> and, and not knowing how to manage my money or spend my money. But I feel like Chime is built to help people to build their credit. Absolutely. And not only that, I remember looking at my bank account and I'd have all these overdraft fees. <laughs> <laughs> and Chime protects you up to $200, you guys, from overdraft fees. Fee free overdraft. I feel like between the credit card and the bank account, like they're really trying to help people build their credit. I feel like they really care about people. Yeah building up their credit and becoming better with their money. Yeah. It's not just a regular bank. It's one that actually cares about you. Yeah. And I mean, if you're out there right now and you're saying, yo, I've been wanting to get my credit together, want yeah. to get this thing together. I'm telling you the Chime Credit Visa card is where it's at. You also have the checking account. You can open up a checking account with a $200 qualifying direct deposit. Mm -hmm. I mean, how easy is that, y'all? Yeah. If you're talking about really getting serious to get your credit exactly yeah. where it's supposed to be, open up the account, get the card, make sure you have those fee free. Cause we all get into those situations where, yeah. you know what? You thought you had $300 in your account it and you get to friend. the store and it's only $13 and you done spent the $13 and now you at negative <laughs> 27. Ah! But you know, Chime <laughs> is absolutely where it is at. Yeah. So you can take more control of your finances and say goodbye to monthly fees. Open your account in minutes at chime.com slash L-W-T-L. That's chime.com slash L-W-T-L. Chime feels like progress. 
Banking services and debit card provided by the Bank Corp NA or Stride Bank NA members FDIC. Spot me eligibility requirements and overdraft limit supply. Boosts are available to eligible Chime members enrolled in Spot Me and are subject to monthly limits. Terms and conditions apply. Go to chime.com slash disclosures for details. All right, we're back. If you have a culture of control, that means that you have you have a foundation of law inside of your house. These are all of the rules. Again, I'm not saying that rules are bad, but just hear me out when I say this. You have you have all that you have this all this this foundation, this system of rules. After the rules, you have to create a system of reinforcement because you have to reinforce the rules. Case in point, the rule is you can only drive 70 down down a certain street. Now I have to create reinforcement. I have to put speed, you know, checkers, police on the side of the road in order to make sure that the rules are followed. After the rule, the system of reinforcement, now I have to create a system of consequences. Do you see how this sequence adds? So now in a culture of control, I'm not really falling in line because I love you. Yeah. I'm falling in line because I don't want to be rejected by you. Yeah. I don't want to be babe. hurt by you. I don't want to get in trouble by you. So since I'm afraid of you <laughs> and I'm yeah. afraid in a culture That's of control real. is based on subordination. The way... People work right now as employees. Yeah. It's not a culture of care. The business has a culture of control. So employees break every law in the world to get to work yeah. at 759 because they're supposed to be there at 8 because they're afraid of being written up again. Mm. It's a it's, it's subordination. I'm just trying to be subordinate. I, like what you call it said, I'm just here so I don't get fined. Mm -hmm. But then when you create a culture of care in your relationship, there's no fear. Yeah. So it's like, I'm not afraid. Like they like, you know, somebody like I was telling somebody, I was like, yeah, my wife's going to going to Mexico. It was like, and you don't mind. She's grown. I'm going to tell you where you can't go. But in a culture of care, I don't have any fear. Yeah. And perfect love. Cast based out on all first fear. John four. Cast out first, all perfect love. Cast out all fear. If I say I love my wife, if I say I love my kid, if I say I love y'all, then I have to let go of the fear that something's going to happen to y'all. That y'all there is times me, go, where you tell me you don't feel comfortable. Like if you if you feel strongly, there's been times, baby. When I told you I didn't want you name a trip, um, Atlanta. Oh well, I mean that was a reason for that. <laughs> so, but also, but also, but also, but also, but also, that reason was backed by the fact that I was extremely yeah, unhealthy yeah. mentally. Yeah, so, but what which I'm, is why I'm so thankful for Zoloft. <laughs> Zoloft commercial. <laughs> So what I'm saying, though, is there's there's been not many, but there's been a few times along the way where you're like, uh, babe, I, I, I just don't feel good about it. I remember my very first speaking engagement I got at a mega church. I was so excited to get it. And you were telling me, you're like, I don't feel like God wants you there. I don't feel like. For real? Oh, yeah. Well, OK, but OK, but let, let's because I, I think this is a great example, babe. Like you just mentioned about Atlanta. Didn't want you to go. Yeah. Let me ask you a question. Did you go? <laughs> yeah, I went. <laughs> Because in a culture of care, yeah, a culture of care says, I hear exactly what you said. Yeah. I heard you. However, I disagree. Yeah. And, well, and you, you kind of told you me, same. like, as I was walking out the door, my no, Uber driver was, no, like, outside. No, no, and I was that like, That is completely oh, inaccurate. Chip already is, paid for it. That is completely If you really inaccurate. didn't want me to go, you should that have really expressed this earlier, friend. Baby, that is inaccurate. You know, you know what, baby? Maybe you're right. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just going to believe the best because we're one house. I'm telling you. I, I know what I know and you know what you know. can remember so much. I have an excellent mind. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yo, your mind can remember everything except what it should remember. That's not true. That is very Baby. true. Okay. Anyways. So, but what I'm saying is I feel like if you really didn't want us to go somewhere, like, for example, if I was like, hey, babe, I'm going to go like, for example, you know, we're praying for Haiti right now. Their their missionaries are stuck over there. They're at war. If I was like, hey, babe, I want to go to Haiti right now. You would be like and I would listen. You no, know, what I, I, mean? I would be like, I'd be like, hey, well, let's let's really let's really look at it. Let's yeah. really think about it. But even but still, babe, like in a culture of care, there can't be any fear. Yeah. And there's not even even, yeah, the, even not. the smallest hint of fear erases the culture of care. So even in that situation, I would say, hey, babe, you know, you got to understand what's going on right there. But you come back and you say, but I feel very strongly I'm supposed to go. You know what my response is going to be? 
baby, I want you to go. What about, okay, remember I was like, oh, me and Ta- I want to take Taylor to Paris. Me and Taylor are going to go. And you're like, no, 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 we need to all go as a family. Well, I, I wanted to, I mean, but, but that, you but just want to experience but that, but that's it. Not, no, I don't want to experience it, but that's not, that's not excluding y'all from going. It's just saying, hey, let's just all go. Go together, yeah. Yeah, all go that's together. Fair. But I mean, you and Taylor are going to Mexico. No, what I'm saying is, we are on a girl's trip. I'm They're so going excited. on a girl's trip to with, Mexico. With her little best friend, her little eight year old best friend. But I guess I'm eight year olds going to go. Go ahead. <laughs> I, but I still want to leave room for you to be my head and my leader. But, okay, see what I'm saying? I, I, like, I what's get, the balance with that? The, babe, the smallest amount of fear. Yeah. The you, smallest yeah. amount of fear erases care. Okay. If I say I respect you. Yeah. Then that means I see you for who you are, not yeah. for who I want you to be. If I say I love you, agape you. Yeah. That means that I can hear you out. Mm-hmm. hear your words and allow for you to live in freedom and individuality because that's how God does us. Yeah, he does. He gives me free will. Yeah. So even though God, even though the Holy Spirit comes in with conviction and says, hey, I wouldn't do that. I should be like, oh, I'm about to do this anyway. Lucy Booty about to have some fun. Hey. And then yeah. whatever consequence, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. But yet and still, he still allows it. Yeah. And so it's like, if God, if God does that for us, yeah. then why can't we do that for other people? And then, Here's the thing, baby, if when when we hit hard times, yeah, when we drop to our knees and pray, yeah. we pray to God for one reason, because we know he cares for us. Yeah, of course. Because we know we can go to him without fear, without judgment, without anything else, because we know that he'll hear us and he'll mm-hmm. answer us. He tells us that throughout his word constantly. Mm-hmm. God creates a culture of care with us. Yeah. And then we turn around, we make Levitical laws, we make other type of laws, we make denominational laws that we create a culture of control. That's the reason why church is the way that it is today. Because it's full of a culture of control. That's the reason why people don't want to go real. back because people are not necessarily being obedient because they hear what that man on the pulpit is saying. They're only obedient because they don't want to get in trouble by God. That ain't love. Yeah. That's fear. And the Bible, 1 John 4, I would encourage you to read it. It says that if you live that type of lifestyle where you're just afraid, but you're going to get in trouble by God, you have not, you don't, e- it says you don't even know God. Mm. You have not yet, ex- you've been in church 30 years. You have not yet experienced the fullness of God and his love. You have no idea what it is. You're preaching good, baby. I don't You're know what that good. was. I'm that was like Abba dude. Give you an offer. Abba- <laughs> you going to cuss when you do it? <gasps> no. Baby, stop. Anyways, but no, that was good. How did you just go first John the cussing? <laughs> Peter. It's called balance. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter. But but, right, but, Peter. but 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 for real, like no, that's good, having, baby. having a one house mentality means I can always check myself being like, hello, I'm afraid right here. Yeah. And the smallest amount of fear is going to ruin my culture of care. Yeah. I can be able to express this is how I feel. Yeah. But I also have to recognize that just because I feel this way doesn't relegate what your action should be. Because nevertheless, you're still you, baby, you grown. Yeah. You're wise. You yeah. lived years before you ever met me. I know, and I'm older than you. So yeah, so you you live years Roman, before Roman you met me. Roman struggles with that. He's like, I don't get how mommy is, is smaller than daddy. I but, just- <laughs> but, but, but dad, yeah, he does. But I mean, but you you live all these yeah. years before I ever came along. Four? There- Wasn't that many, <laughs> but it was four. Yeah but, yeah, but still, but I'm talking about before, before, before we met each other. Got you, yeah. You, during that time, you had to learn how to trust God too. A hundred percent. You had to turn, you had to learn how to hear from him too. Yeah. So what makes me assume that just because we got married that you had to just cut that communication off from him altogether. Right. And I have to be able to and trust go through you, yeah. as a leader that yeah. your words don't have to just go yeah. through me. Yeah. That I can come in as a voice of wisdom. Yeah. But my wisdom can, if, if my instructions are based in fear, they didn't come from God. And I love that you've led the charge in our home on like, on all of this. He has, it's been incredible. And you've taught it to me and you explained it to me. And I'm also teaching this Sabbath LA too. We have services every Saturday, LA join in. Go ahead. Yes. And you can find the address and info on Sabbath. LA.com. Yeah. Also we're Sabbath underscore Los Angeles on Instagram. <laughs> Not the wink. Keep plug. Not the wink. But I feel like it's brought such a peaceful home. Like even with the kids. Like we have so this. So it's peace. We have so much peace with the kids, even in their leading. I remember Taylor came to me and she was talking about something the other day about not kissing her husband till she gets married. Mm-hmm. And she was talking about all this stuff. And I mean, mind you, she's eight. 
But I'm like, well, what do you think about that, Tay? Like, tell me what you think about it. Tell me what you think. Well, I don't know. She's like, I just want to do what you did. And I was like, well, I want you to do what you, you know, want to do concerning right. that. Like, I don't want to put pressure on her. Or, you need to do this or you need to do that. Or Logan, he got a C, C in Bible. C plus in Bible. Got a C in Bible. He got a C plus in Bible. <laughs> He's a son so, of a pastor. <laughs> so we've been working on his Bible verse every day. And oh, he God. yesterday we were out playing football. He brought me his grade. He said, Guess what, mommy? I have an A now. It's been the past three weeks and I've been acing everything. And I'm just like, I'm so proud of you. But it's like a safe place. Everybody feels like they can talk to each other in our home. Yeah. Very openly, very honestly. But A's don't make our kids. They don't. And exactly. I, I agree. Um, I just want him to put effort towards his Bible verses. But, but no, but, but that's, what, that's what I was saying. What, what, is, what is very healthy that you did is you didn't go into terms of like, you know, what some people do would be like, well, you you can only bring A's in this house. Oh, yeah. No, no. Our thing is Because I was a strong B student. Our, our, I mean, I... I ain't gonna lie. I I made I made all A's. I graduated You're high school with a, with a four point two. I graduated top of my you class so out of four hundred kids. I mean, that was me. I was a three point I was like, yes. but but here's the thing. I didn't fail. <laughs> that that's that. We don't we don't we don't put yeah. I don't put that on my kids. Yeah, we don't put. We just on want them. you. To, we just want you to have effort. One house. We just want you to have effort at one house, y'all. But we appreciate y'all no, we love joining you guys. us. Um, and this is a been, great combo, a right? Great conversation. We can continue this thing going, but we love y'all. Introduces. We out this piece. Peace.